Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Pick him up. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. What happened there, Shavil? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, well, uh, disaster strikes at breakfast. Okay, that's the headline news. Okay, August 8th, Thursday, <clears throat> one day before the birthday of the birthday of <coughs> Oh yeah, one day before the birthday of the Gospel Commentary. <laughs> Tomorrow's the anniversary. How many years now? Two. Two years that we have been doing these Gospel Commentaries at breakfast. And of course, it was. It's also the birthday of Grandpa Jacob, right? Tomorrow. So, huh? And the death anniversary of Grandma Lily. That's right. All on one day. So, of course, Grandpa Jacob passed away eight months ago in January. So, uh, this will be the first year that. Uh, he would not be among us when we celebrate his birthday. But it was also yeah, August 9 that we began these commentaries, which were, well, well, we'll tell the rest of the story tomorrow. Okay, we'll tell the rest of the story tomorrow. Okay, hey, and look who's online, Mindo Fajardo, yeah. one of Grandpa's very good friends and colleagues at the Personal Management Association of the Philippines. Hello there, Mindo. Good evening your side of the world okay so today we're going to comment on the gospel of saint matthew chapter 16 verses 13 to 23 um this is a gospel well, let me just tell you the, yeah i'll tell you a story because uh, there's so many things around it this was a time when jesus asked his disciples who do people say that i am and then people are saying, well, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say one of the prophets. And then Jesus asks his apostles, well, what about you? What do you say? Who do you say I am? He was trying to test whether his apostles know him enough. Right? And everybody was quiet. Maybe they didn't quite know how to answer the question. Or they didn't quite know how to give the right answer. They know he was Jesus Christ, but is there anything more than that that they needed to say about him? Then Peter gave the answer that that well became, um, I suppose, the um, the basis for Jesus confirming his selection to be Pope, the first Pope. When Saint Peter said, "You are the Christ." The Son of the Living God. Those are very, very profound words. Short but profound. It encapsulates really everything that Jesus Christ is all about. Right? He's the Son of the Living God. You are the Christ, meaning you are the Messiah. You are not this Jesus who is like the prophet of like everybody else was a prophet. No. You are the Christ, and the Christ means Messiah. The Christ means you're going to be the Savior. You are the Savior of the world and the Son of the living God. So, and then, because of that, Jesus praises him and says, You know what? Uh, Simon bar Jonah, right? Simon, son of Jonah. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. It was my Father in heaven who revealed this to you. And from now on, we're going to change your name. We're going to give you a different identity, a different name which will signify your primacy among the apostles. First among equals, primus inter pares, as the saying goes, right? The first among equals, the Pope. And he says, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whosoever sins you... Uh, bind on earth are going to be bound in heaven. Whosoever sees you loose on earth are loosed in heaven. Then he strictly orders his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. Not yet, at least, until his mission 
is complete. Now, um, and then, well, he goes on to say, uh, to talk about the fact that the scribes and the Pharisees are going to find a way to kill him. And that on the third day, he was going to rise again. And then Peter, the newly emboldened Peter, <laughs> given the authority now, um, you know, to be the head of the church, he says, no, 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 I'm not on my watch, Lord. That's not going to happen. You are not, nobody's going to touch you. Nobody is going to lay hands on you, at least not on my watch, right? That was what he seemed to be expressing to Jesus. Uh, and what did Jesus tell him? Get behind me, Satan. See? Get behind me, Satan. You don't think like God thinks. You're thinking like a man. Wow. That must have been a slap on the face of St. Peter. Right? Just after being confirmed that he was the prime apostle, the leader of the rest, immediately Jesus puts him in his place and says, Hey, shut up. <laughs> you, that's not the way God thinks. God has a plan here, okay? And you don't think you're going to be better than God by changing the whole plan of God. That's not going to happen. Your job is to facilitate the plan of God. Your job, Peter, is to obey and to facilitate the plan of God, not to be an obstacle. That is why Jesus called him Satan, because only Satan obstructs the plan of God. Only Satan and the devil put obstacles on our path. That's what the devil does for us today. He tries to put obstacles on our path, right? And so what we have to tell the devil is, get behind me, Satan. Get me, get out, get out, get, get lost, get out of here. I don't like you here in my life. Okay? Same thing that Jesus told Peter. Get behind me, Satan. You're not going to be an obstacle to my plans. I'm going to die. That's the plan of God. I'm going to give up myself. That's the way I'm going to save the world. And you are not going to change it. Don't think that you are somebody now who will change that plan. Right? And uh, we got to learn from, from this lesson. And, uh, and well, uh, we have to repeat our Lord's words for the devil. Get behind me, devil. You're not going to put obstacles on my path towards sanctity, on my path towards doing the will of God. So there are many lessons here, right? And we can comment on different things, like, for example, that we have already done. We, we see here the primacy of Peter. Okay, he was the first pope, confirmed by Jesus in this gospel. We also see here the uh, institution of the sacrament of confession. Very good, Joe. When, he, when our Lord said, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever sins you bind on earth are bound in heaven. Whosoever sins you forgive on earth are forgiven in heaven. This is a sacrament of confession. And I remember uh, a year or two ago when we were reading the same gospel, we were commenting already on confession. So that's not what we're going to talk about today. Okay? He foretold his death, right? He foretold in this gospel, he foretold his death and his resurrection. Okay? And then he rebukes Peter for his very human outlook. For his very human outlook. Jesus said, you're thinking like men do, not as God does. Okay? So another lesson here for us is we have to always look at the events in our lives, not from a merely human perspective, but from the perspective of God. And that's what you call supernatural outlook. Okay? To have a supernatural outlook, to have an outlook or perspective in life that is really viewed from the lenses of God, right? It's like looking at a scope, okay? But instead of using our own lenses only, our own human way of reading and looking at events of our lives, let's look at it all of us from the perspective of God. How might God be looking at this situation? And what might God want me to do about my situation now? Okay? That is always what we... We have to do that's that's what supernatural outlook is all about okay uh, but what i really want to comment about what's abe uh, fuzzing about what i really want to focus on today is something that might be very relevant 
for our times. Okay? And that is the assurance that Jesus gives his apostles. And what is that? He tells Peter, Upon this rock, upon you, Peter, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And here's the guarantee. The gates of hell shall not prevail against them. The gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. No matter what happens, come hell or high water, come all the persecutions which we are, which they experienced during their time, and, and the time of the Romans and many other uh, uh, times of persecution which does not seem to stop up to now, up to today. How many uh, Christian believers in Jesus Christ are being slaughtered in different parts of the world, right? By the hundreds, by the thousands. Up to now it is happening. All of the persecutions uh, of, of Christ's uh, followers are happening now. The scandals that the church has been uh, rocked with, right, from the uh, accusations of uh, uh, priests and bishops, um, you know, uh, being uh, molesters and all that, uh, gay priests who have somehow <laughs> um, entered the church and and uh, are are um, you know wielding their their evil influence inside the church. Um, all of the curse of abortion, euthanasia, and all the other troubles that uh, are against human nature, right? That have been propagated of late. Uh, all the wrong ideas that even that even uh, the hierarchy of the church are promoting among the faithful. Look at all the scandalous behaviors um, um, happening at church, right? The disrespect, the grave disrespect for the Holy Eucharist, which is happening every day and people don't seem to care about it. Just yesterday, we had another accident at church with, a, with, with uh, the species of, of wine uh, being spilt on the floor. And look how it was handled. Eh? It's not only, I mean, it's, it's, it's just bad. The situation around us has gone from bad to worse and it just gets worse every day but but we have to hope we have to cling to that promise of Jesus Christ that the gates of hell will not prevail against it that the Holy Spirit is in his church and that no matter how many evil people try to destroy this church here in America we even have uh, liberal uh, politicians and and and, uh, and congressmen who uh, are legislating, see, uh, to to um, to break the seal of confession, right? That very recent uh, uh, bill, um, it was good. It didn't pass here in California. Right? They were trying to uh, make priests break the seal of confession. So. We got opposition all over the place. We got all sorts of pressures all over the place from all types of people, even from people within the church. But we have to hang on to Christ's words. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. No, it will not. So what are we to do? Number one, let's take things as they come. Let's muscle through this with faith. Okay? Not because we are physically strong, we are macho, or we are cocky. No, but we know we are hanging on to the words of Jesus. The gates of hell will not prevail against his church. Let's count on that promise and let's just persevere in doing what we're doing. We have to persevere. But at the same time, we have to invest in plenty of prayer. Pray, pray, pray for the church. Pray for her priests. Pray for the faithful. Pray for everybody. Pray for every one of us. And as we have been doing, as recommended by the church, by, uh, was it Pope Leo? Who, who uh, initiated the prayer to St. Michael. See, after every Mass. Because he had a vision where uh, the, the devil asked Jesus for a hundred years. Okay? That, uh, that he be given a hundred years to destroy the church. Well... 
It looks like he was actually given permission and it's happening. <laughs> that vision must be real. And, and he asked us to pray the prayer to St. Michael in order to help the church overcome this, uh, this uh, devilish uh, slaughter of uh, the faith of people. So, let's, uh, let's keep these ideas in mind today as we live out the gospel all throughout the day. Okay? And as we pray for the church. Okay, that's it for us folks. Hi Manny. Manny all the way from Iloilo. We missed you Manny. We were in Iloilo. Hopefully we see you again sometime. Bye-bye. Have a good day everybody. We're off to Mass. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.